Hello friends! Welcome to the Goddess Crochet Podcast. My name is Joanna, also known as Goddess Crochet on Ravelry, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. Am I missing anything? Just everywhere on the internet you can find me as Goddess Crochet. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to my returning viewers and thank you to any new viewers and new subscribers. We've had um, a few over the past month. We have just hit over the 3,600 subscriber mark, so I really appreciate that. Thank you to anyone who has given a thumbs up or subscribed to the channel. It really makes a difference and it helps the videos get found on YouTube, so thank you so much. We have a good amount of stuff to talk about today because it has been a fair amount of time since I have recorded. Um, life has happened, as you all know, it can get a little crazy sometimes. We've had sicknesses in the family and vacation time, and I don't like to broadcast. Um, typically, when my husband and daughter are home, it allows me to focus if nobody's home. Um, but my daughter has expressed interest in showing off some of her creations, so I think next podcast... Um, we'll have a little bit of, uh, of stuff for my daughter she wants to share. So we'll let her do that. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. I have some finished objects to share, um, a little bit of knitting and a little bit of crocheting. So let's start off with some knitting. Um, you might have seen this in the last podcast that I did. I had finished one of my daughter's socks and I was working on another one. And I got both of them finished. Yay, two socks. They are made from um, Perfect Pair. It was some yarn that I got from Michaels. It is comparable to the Premier uh, Wool Free Sock Yarn, which I will talk a little bit more about in a minute. She really likes them. Um, she wore them yesterday and she actually didn't want to take them off to give them to me as it was really sweet. So I'm going to make her some more um, because I have enough yarn left over, I think, to make another pair of socks from these. So they came out really cute. Um, they fit her really well. I think I did a pretty good job. There is a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, tiny bit of hole at the gusset. You know... I'm still working on on my sock knitting. I am a fairly new sock knitter. So there, you know, I can always go back with a darning needle. And so those holes closed, I'm not too, too worried about it. And I'm sure she's going to outgrow these in like another week. Well, this one was pretty good. Not really too much of a hole right there. But I'm really pleased with how these came out. And I'm anxious to see how they wear. Um, because, and I will show you some more sock talk. These are um, some socks that I had knit up for myself. And um, I was really pleased with them. I was able to get a pair of socks just out of one 50 gram ball of the Premier Wool Free Sock Yarn. I have worn them maybe five or six times since the last time, uh, or, or since they were made. And I want to show you something about this particular yarn, okay? Like I said, this is the Premier Wool Free Sock Yarn. Can you see all that felting? Okay, now, I have been hand washing these. I have not been machine washing these. Look at that. Okay, so I figured, all right, well, maybe it'll just happen once or twice and the socks will felt a little bit and it won't be a big deal. Well, and it's on both of them. It's not even just one of them. Let me show you. Do you see all that? Okay, so not only is that annoying inside your foot and you have to pick off all the felt and stuff, but look at this. Do you see that? There's a hole already. It has completely worn through and that is on both socks in the same spot. Now, I have heard that you're typically hard on your heels when you do socks. And I was a little concerned because I didn't do an eye of partridge heel. I just did a plain heel, so I'm thinking, okay, well maybe my heel will wear off. Nope, on both socks in the exact same spot, I have 
hole right down the middle of the bottom of the foot because of all that felting that's been going on and the you know it's just getting worn down so I'm not too happy um, about that <sighs> you know it was a really good yarn to work with I enjoyed it but I, uh, I won't be using it for socks again and I still have a bunch left over um, so I think if I do use the yarn again I could use it for fingerless gloves maybe but I will not use Premier Wolfrey sock yarn for socks unfortunately because I just bought some too now um, this is kind of a work in progress but I started for my husband um, a sock and I had to start this a few times just to make sure it would fit his foot well uh, but I'm using Premier wool free sock yarn and I started this before I noticed that my socks were felting and having holes it's too bad because it's a really nice color is this one's oceanic and um, I was really excited about making him a pair of socks with it but I'm not gonna waste my time making how many got you know lord knows how many hours making a pair of large men's feet socks only to have holes in it like five times after he wears it so we're gonna rip this out together <laughs> we're gonna frog this baby because i just you know i'm not gonna spend the time so here we go you ready you want to frog it with me here we're just gonna pull out the needles there's one and uh these are chai goo i love these needles these are um Chai Goo Sock Needles. They are my favorite. Ready? Bye-bye sock. It was not meant to be. What can I say? I will repurpose the yarn. I'll probably make fingerless gloves. They will not be socks. It's too bad. I wonder if this would fit my hand as a cuff. That actually pretty good. Might use that number for when I cast on fingerless gloves. So yeah. Bye bye sock. It was nice knowing you. Too bad, right? So unfortunately, I can't re recommend Premier Wool Free Sock Yarn for socks. It's unfortunate. Like I said, because I already have some. So we'll roll that back up. Um, I can't tell yet if the um, the Michaels brand perfect pair will do the same my daughter has only worn the socks once so after I hand wash them and uh, she wears them a couple more times I will give you a full report on that so bummer but you know what ripping stuff out is part of a knitter's life it's not much you can do about it we've all had to frog projects right I know we have so that's the sock situation. Um, I have a couple skeins of uh, Knit Picks Felici, so I think next uh, I'm going to knit another pair of socks for myself and see how those work up. And I'm hoping that they don't leave holes in the bottom of my socks. We shall see. Okay, so I have another finished object. This one is crochet. And this has been in the works since before Christmas. Um, it's a blanket for my brother that I started a while ago and he's coming over this weekend so I get to give it to him in person. James, you're probably not watching this podcast but if you are, turn it off. You can't see this yet, it's a surprise. Okay, um, this is a pattern from the August 2018 Crochet World magazine. It might be October. Don't quote me on that. I will leave a link to the pattern in the description box below as I will leave links to all the things that I talk about in the description box below and I will also have links on the Goddess Crochet group on Ravelry if that is where you prefer to get your information. So without further ado, this is the Diamond Overlay Scrap Gan. And I have to stand up for that to show you. Oh, that's the back side. It is pretty massive. 
There's no way I can get it all in the camera. And it pretty much looks all the same. Phew. But it's nice and heavy. Um, it's cozy. It uses... Woo, it uses a, um, a mosaic technique, which is cool. Like, um, you do rows of single crochet, and then these um, black diamonds are like double crochet down into the row below so it's like it's a diamond overlay kind of looks like stained glass to me i used um i used the ac Moore um studio classic yarn uh it it comes in like these big skeins for like five or six bucks it was a really good deal i think i used two uh, skeins of black and one skein of this blue color maybe a little bit more than one and one skein of this um, variegated so it's pretty economical for you know as far as as far as blankets go so I am hoping that he will love that and I love it I'm working on one for myself but blankets for myself tend to take uh, a back seat as I finish up gifts and have priority knitting and crocheting and obligatory 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 things to take care of so I don't know when my blanket will get done but his is done okay let's see what else do we have for now on to works in progress um you already saw the sock that I just ripped out and so that's no longer a work in progress we're gonna have to find some other yarn to make a sock for my dear husband I felt bad, but he was like, don't worry about it. Don't make the sock. It's going to have holes in it. So, okay. So let's move on to some works in progress. Um, we'll start with knitting. I am working on a shawl. This is my pattern. It's just for a, um, a triangle shawl, but it is knit differently than I usually do triangle shawls. Um, usually I start from the top center and work um work from the top and go make it outward i don't know how to describe that from the top center and you just work around and increase at the sides and at the tip uh, this is worked on the bias so it is pretty interesting it's still just a triangle shawl um let me see i guess it's gonna be like this it's not big enough yet obviously um so I really like the construction of it because it is super easy to remember. It's great in front of the TV knitting. Um, there's only one increase row and the other is just a straight knitting row. I used a, um, a green stitch marker on the rows that I'm not increasing. So I know like green for green light, just knit all the way across. And the other row I know I have to do an increase. Um, that pattern should be on my website soon. I can't say exactly when because I have a bunch of things that I'm working on and who knows. But I will let you know. The yarn that I'm using for that is Shawl in a Ball. And the colorway is Community Coral. Um, and I'm using a size 6 Chai Goo Needle. I believe it's a 6. Maybe it's the other one. Looking at these, the sizes on these trigo needles is a little bit like reading old school thermometers. You have to like flip it back and forth. Yeah, it's a size six. Um, so I will have that pattern for you soon. Keep an eye on my Instagram for the updates so you know exactly when those are going to go out. Okay, uh, the next thing I have to show you is crochet. This I started a while ago maybe before Christmas, because um, I knew it was going to take a long time. First, let me show you. This is the book that the pattern is from. Um, I'm doing a book review for Leisure Arts, so when this, when my, when the blanket is done, I will have a giveaway, and you'll be able to win a copy of this book, which is awesome. The pattern that I am doing is this Tumbling Blocks blanket which is awesome and it reminds me of Qbert. Do you guys remember Qbert? 
Anybody over 30 will remember Cuber, and anybody under 30 will be like, what the hell is she talking about? It was a video game on Atari. <laughs> I'm really dating myself now. Um, and so it's really cool, and it reminds me of Cuber. Now, I started, I had some of the hexes, and I started putting some of them together, as you can see. And it just looks really cool. Um, I was thinking about possibly making a jacket or something instead of a blanket, but I really couldn't wrap my head around how to make it all work. So I'm just going to do a blanket for now, and maybe we'll put the, the uh, jacket thing on the back burner. But here's what I have so far. That is the front. Uh, isn't that so cool? It's gonna be awesome. I don't know which is the right side or which is upside down and downside up. Right side up. I think it's supposed to be like that. Um, there are a massive amount of tails to weave in, so that's gonna be fun. See all those? It's like an octopus. The jellyfish? That's what my husband called it. But it looks really cool, so it's totally going to be worth the effort, and um, I can't wait to have that done and be able to give away a copy of that book to you guys. So I think you'll enjoy it. There's some really good patterns in here, um, even if you don't want to do the um, the Cubert looking one. The one from the cover is really cool. It's like circles in a granny square. Um, there's, you know, a regular granny square blanket. There's these triangle stripes, which is pretty cool. What else do we have in here? There's just a lot of good patterns for using up your scrap yarn. With Leisure Arts, as always, um, in the back of the book, they have some nice detailed information on how to do any special stitches. So you know how to do everything. So even a, um, a beginner or an advanced beginner could really tackle any of the, any of the blankets in this book. Um, if you can't wait for the giveaway and you wanna buy this, I will leave a link in the description box below to, um, to where you can find it on Leisure Arts. And that would be an affiliate link, I should disclose. So what an affiliate link is, and this is how things work on my website or any of the websites that you go to where people have advertising, um, when you click on an ad to go purchase something, if you buy it, then I will get a very small commission. Um, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just like a little reward that Leisure Arts gives me for sending you their way. Um, and it's how, it's how crochet and knitting pattern designers who put out free patterns, it's how they keep their website going. So um, they re we really appreciate your support. Let's see, on to the next thing. Okay, so one more work in progress. Um, this is the bottom of a bag that I'm working on. Uh, I was going to do like a family of bags of different sizes and this was gonna be the extra large, but this is super huge. Um, it's really big. So this is just gonna be a standalone pattern and I'm not sure exactly what kind of bag it's going to be yet. Um, other than a big one, a big beach bag or something. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's pretty big and it's, it's going to be cool. It's going to be awesome, man. So, um, yeah, it's really easy. It's done in single crochet in the round. And then once you get to where you start building up the sides, it's done in a, um, a continuous spiral instead of joining and chaining one and going around it's just you have to move your stitch marker each time you get to the first stitch of the row otherwise you're not going to know where you are um so yeah i'm not sure when that's going to be out but that's just another thing that i'm working on and that is it for finished objects and works in progress um the rest of the stuff is a little bit off topic so if you're just here for the knitting and crochet content and you want to bounce, I understand. There's a lot to do. It's a busy day. Have a good one. Thank you for joining me. If you'd like to stick around, I appreciate that. Let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, 
I recently got a Dharma trading catalog in the mail and that is because I have been watching some yarn dyeing on YouTube and I want to do it so badly um, and so I have been looking into the Dharma dyes, the acid dyes. I've been watching tutorials on YouTube. Um, it's a little bit of investment, so I can't do it right now, but I really wanted to get this catalog so I could like get acclimated with prices and things that I need. So if you are looking to um, dye yarn, or even if you're just a tie dyer, then Dharma dye, or is it Dharma, Dharma Trading Company has, um, they'll send you a free catalog and they have, um, all sorts of different things that you can dye. They have dyes, all sorts of different kind of dyes. Um, you know, and they have all cotton and rayon outfits and stuff, uh, skirts and what have you, just everything. They have everything that you could ever possibly want to dye is in here. So I recommend that and I will keep you posted on if I buy any dyeing supplies because I really, really want to try it. It looks like a lot of fun and I think I have a pretty good sense with color, so I think I could nail it. Hopefully, we'll see. Okay, um, this is kind of off topic, but it's still crafty. I have been working on this um, cross stitch kit I got last year, and I haven't, before Christmas, I didn't really have a whole lot of time to work on it. But I have been putting some hours into it lately because I've just been a little bit burnt out on knitting crocheting if that's possible. I just needed like something different to do. So, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is what I have done so far. It doesn't look like a whole lot, I know. And in comparison to the rest of the canvas, it's really not a whole lot, but let me tell you, y'all, those are hours and hours and hours in there. Um, those who cross stitch will appreciate how much work actually goes into it. I asked my husband yesterday um, if he could tell a difference in like the last time that he saw it. I think the last time he saw it, I had like this much done. He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, it's just because it doesn't look like much. But one day it'll be done and it'll be awesome. Where's that picture? It's really pretty. I want to give it to my daughter when it's done. So cute. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, I have a couple of acquisitions to show you and then I will let you go. Um, I went to Michael's, yes, not Michael's, I went to AC Moore yesterday. They had um, Mandala yarn on sale for $5 pop. So I got these awesome colors. This is Gnome. And I couldn't resist them sitting there. There were three left and I grabbed all three because look at those bright colors. Those are awesome. Those are my jam. I love super bright, like tie, you can tell. I'm wearing a tie-dye shirt and they kind of match, don't they? So I'm really happy with that purchase. I feel like $5 a skein was totally worth it. So I'm happy with that. And a couple non-yarny, slightly related things. Um, I got a couple of bags off of AliExpress, which um, <clears throat> it's kind of like Wish. You order things and you wait like a month and then you get in, in the mail and you're like, what did I order? I forgot. And then you open it up and it's like Christmas. So I got this really cute bag. I looked for um, makeup bags, llama makeup bags. It says llama love. It's on both sides. And for $2, it's a pretty decent bag. Um, I don't have anything in this one at this moment, but it's got kind of a like semi waterproof lining. So if you did have makeup in here and it spilled, it probably wouldn't go all over the rest of your stuff. This one, I absolutely love. <laughs> this is another llama bag. And I'm not 100% that these are llamas. They might be alpacas, but I want to call them llamas. We're just going to call them llamas. Um, and we've named a few of them already. Um, that's Whoopi Llama, naturally. Um, yep, 
that's Whoopi Llama. Rasta Mama. And my daughter named this one Madonna Llama. Because <laughs> she said it looks like Madonna. So that's Madonna Llama. And this guy over here is Ed Sheenan. I believe that's his name. He is a comedian um, who has like kind of a really annoying voice and he talks like this. <laughs> he was in, um, he was a voice of the know-it-all on Polar Express. He was that kid and I think he's been on a couple episodes of Seinfeld. But if you go and look up Ed Sheenan on, um, no, 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 it's not Ed Sheenan. I'm thinking, of, it's Eddie Dezine. That's it. Eddie Dezine. Um, if you look up Eddie Dezine on IMDb, you will see a picture and he looks exactly like this. He's got the square glasses and the funny teeth. So that's, that's Ed Dezine. Ed Dezine and Madonna Lama and Whoopi Lama. And I love the diversity of the llamas because llamas of all colors are welcome here. So those are my llama bags that I love. I believe that is it for this episode. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I will link all the good stuff um, that you have seen here today in the description box below. And I hope you have a fabulous week and I will see you in another week or two. Bye creative friends.